Good morning and welcome to Brenda L.B. Kenny's Fine Arts Studio. I'm Brenda and we are doing our 12 for 12 in 2021 Best of Pittsburgh series. We are currently in the second week of March doing our painting and I'm working on a painting that was inspired by a photograph taken by Lynn Lassonde and it features a little white-tailed doe. And last week when we were here, I put in the basic layers here, as you can see. Um, I went back over this past week and put in some of the uh, third layer of paint, actually, and a little bit more of the detail. And then today, I'm going to be working on coming over here, finishing the first layer, putting that in, and then getting some of the... Um, detail in there and hopefully by the end of the hour I may be able to go down and start working and getting the first layer on our little dough. So that's the agenda for today and I thank you so much for joining me today. I um, hope that you've had a good week. I woke up this morning and it was n uh, nine below zero. Uh, some different from this last week when we first, uh, when we had that little warm up, um, it was like 60 degrees on one day and 70 degrees the next day and it was just wonderful and then now we're back down to nine below so when they say in Pittsburgh you always wonder what the weather is just wait five minutes well that that's basically what happens up here but anyway um, we're gonna be jumping into this painting and so um, as you come on just let me know that you're here and that you're watching and I'm going to pull this up a little bit so I can get started on putting in some of this background. I just want you to be able to see here. Um, it's starting to take place on this side. We do have some of the trees and the branches and everything falling into place over there. So I'm going to be just do basically filling in over here. And I'm hoping that we will be able to get to the dough by or later this morning. But we'll see how far we get on this. So thank you for joining me, and as you come on, let me know you're here and that you're watching, where you're watching from. This area back here is still very dark, where our trees are. So I'm just trying to get the first and second layer of paint on here and trying to get this um, worked out so that I know where things are pretty much. And then we'll go back and put detail in after. On the palette today I have the Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Sap Green, um, that brilliant blue that is working really well for a lot of things and I have white. Good morning Lynn. Thanks for joining me. Did you have nine below where you are? <laughs> I had nine below here this morning. It was pretty chilly. A lot different from this last week where it was nice and warm for a couple of days. I very much appreciated that. We have another tree back in here that's kind of hiding back in the woods. We'll put that in here. And as I said last week, this whole section up here, I'm going to have to ad lib some anyway. Um, because it actually extends beyond the top of the picture here. So I'll just be filling that in for now, and then I'll go back and put some detail in here after. So it'll be a little bit of an artistic licensed situation, but... Thank you for joining me. I was watching the deer this morning. I feel bad for them when it's as cold as it is. 
but I guess they're they're equipped to deal with it. They like to come and lay down behind the house underneath the spruce trees back there. And um, lay in the sun and soak that up. So back here, I'm not really doing detail or anything. I'm just trying to get that like second layer of paint on up there because I know I'm going to have to just kind of extend a lot of these branches and uh, kind of ad lib up there. So just get some paint on the canvas. And I'm going to try to work relatively quickly today because I would like to get down here to just put the first layer in on the dough. I think that would be kind of fun to get to. So a lot of this area over here on this side of the canvas is dark because of the, the trees. Um, so I'm just going to be like kind of putting things in where they go and trying to get this um, roughed in as quickly as possible this morning. Where things are. Add a little bit of that blue because I want to make more of a gray here. So burnt umber, sap green, a little gray, uh, excuse me, royal blue mixed in makes the gray. And this section is right here where the snow kind of all comes through. So I'm looking at this whole great big shape here. It's kind of a big triangular elongated shape. So and it comes all the way over to our big tree where the snow is. This is the snow on the other side. So on this side is where the snow would be coming through back there. Add a little more white to that. Basically just kind of laying in basic shapes for now like we were doing last week. And I just had some snow come off my roof. I wanted to um, thank everyone. If you um, are a member of the Pittsburgh, New Hampshire enthusiasts, um, I posted a picture of the January painting on that this last week, and um, and just very grateful for everybody that came on and and commented. And um, I want to thank all of you for your nice comments and for the inquiries about purchasing prints and purchasing the paintings. I'm so glad that people are enjoying seeing the finished paintings. And if you um, haven't joined that group yet and you are someone that likes to come to Pittsburgh or to learn more about the area. Um, they, there's a lot of information on there from different people. So it's, it's a group to look into to joining if you haven't as of yet.
So this whole big triangle comes all the way down pretty much down into here and across. I'm just going to kind of lay that in there so I can see. Now the trees are going to go over the top of this, obviously, the ones that are in the foreground. But that kind of gives us an idea of where that snow line is back there. A little more blue. There's white over here. And most of this section down in here is all very dark, so I'm just going to be trying to fill that in pretty quickly here. Using the green and the dark brown, the burnt umber. And trying to keep track of where our little branches are. I know this stage of uh, painting, uh, there's a lot to just kind of lay in, and it's it's not as exciting to watch this stage. But I think it's important to kind of demonstrate um, the different stages of it. That you know, it does take a little bit of concentration and time and. It's kind of, I, hopefully it's helpful for people that like to paint to just kind of see the process, to see everything that is taking place as it's coming together. So how is everyone doing out there? Like I said, I hope that everybody had a, a good week. And I hope it's warming up for you a little bit, wherever you are. I was uh, thinking about spring and it reminds me of the first spring that we were here, um, which was about just over about 23 years ago. Um, we came up with our camper and parked it here in April with the anticipation that we would be staying in the camper through the summer while we were building our house. And so that was a, it was a adventure <laughs> to say the least. But it was, it was, uh, we had gotten snow. We woke up one morning while we were here 
and uh, we got snow and so the kids were all excited because they wanted to go out and play in the snow it made it a little bit cool staying in the camper but they had fun and on our property there's a a brook that runs down through the property and so they they liked to go down and check out the brook and my husband was down there one morning when we were here that first spring and he was taking care of some of the drainage in the driveway and that kind of thing down there by the brook and so the kids were down there with him and he had warned them do not go near the brook um, but they decided that it was too irresistible and luckily it's not very deep um, but one of the kids fell in the brook and so shortly after that I had them showing up at the door of the camper soaking wet and a little cold and they were laughing so it was all good but falling in the brook in April is not a not a pleasant experience. <laughs> that was an interesting, interesting spring and summer. So we spent the entire summer in the camper while we were building the house here. And we got our water from a spring that we found up on the hill behind the house. So we made many, many treks up and down the hillside, getting the spring to run in a pipe down the hill to our location. And at this time of year, you jump a lot of deer. So that's just basically laid in there because I'm going to be going back and I'll just extend these branches up into here and add some other things in detail in there because there, it actually is above the top of this picture. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep filling in the dark areas down here under the branches. Get this first layer on here. As I said, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I can because I'd like to get the first layer on the dough. Does anyone else have any Pittsburgh experiences that they can tell me about as far as their first visits to Pittsburgh or spring experiences?
And so this is still dark here as well. It's all brown. I know this doesn't isn't real exciting watching me lay in some of these darker colors right now. So I appreciate that you're here watching. Once this first layer dries, I'll go back and do the second layer like I did over here on this side. This, as you can see, is kind of blocking in more of what is actually happening in the tree back there. Negative 13 this morning, Lynn. Oh, you're colder than me. <laughs> uh, a little high, higher elevation where up where you are. I'm sure it was pulled down by the river too. The sun's out today, so that's a good thing. Hopefully it'll warm up by this afternoon. They are saying that it's going to get a little bit warmer later in the week, so I'm excited about that. So let's see, this actually comes down through here. way. And there's some little um, branches and weeds and that kind of thing that are taking place back here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the lighter color brown here and just kind of indicate <coughs> where those are coming down this way. Kind of gives me an idea. It's a little bit lighter color there. But there's some texture back there where the branches are. So I'm going to be um, <clears throat> going on on, I believe, Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. Um, I'm going to be jumping on live to do the little chickadees that I had talked about last week. 
Um, I'll show you those here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, last year we did a little paint party um, and we painted the chickadee mittens and these are actually on wood plywood um, cut out shapes of the chickadees and so on Thursday evening at six o'clock I'm going to be going live and I will teach you how to paint the little chickadees. I'm actually going to be doing a painting on an 11 by 14 canvas. So I'll be painting on canvas. It'll be a spring chickadee painting with chickadees and apple blossoms. But these chickadees can be painted on any project. So I'm actually going to be teaching you how to paint the chickadees on that painting. And if you tune in live, you can either paint along with me um, or you can come back and you can watch the the video later um, after you've had a chance to get your supplies together you can come back and watch that video um, and then just stop and go as you go along so you'll be able to paint the chickadees um, either the painting on the 11 by 14 spring chickadees or if you're live I'll also tell you how to go about getting the template and the directions um, and the supply list for the chickadee mittens as well so um, just tune in live and I will show you how to get all of that and I'll show you and teach you how to do the chickadees so that you can do it on any project of your own. So just wanted to let you know that that was coming up on Thursday. If you're interested in joining me, um, I will be here right on my fine art page doing that on Thursday at six in the evening. So, and if you can't join, if you can't come and see the live at that point, it'll still be here on my page so you can come back and just watch the replay later and it will tell you how to get the templates and everything. So letting you know that that is coming up on Thursday. Should be a fun project to do. Everybody seemed to enjoy doing that last year when we were doing it for our paint party. It took me a little bit longer to get things together for that than I thought, so that's why I'm actually doing it this week. I had hoped to get to it last weekend but didn't get there. So it will be this week. If um, anybody is interested in um, painting along with me in some of these events, um, please feel free to send me your email either by messenger or um, just drop me an email at bkennyfineart at myfairpoint.net and I will add you to my contact list so I can let you know when some of these events are taking place so you'll have first-hand knowledge of when those are coming up. Now these down, down in here, this is pretty much trees. This is dark right here, and then we have some nice branches coming out from the big tree back there. Some spruce branches. So we're going to lighten the green up a little bit. Still keeping a little bit of that brown in there so that it has more of an olive tone. some of these branches in here.
you're getting there slowly. <clears throat> Now this section over here is a lot of like weeds and that kind of thing growing. We do have a section of snow that's kind of gray underneath. So I'm going to use some of that gray that we used earlier. And this is just some snow that's in here under the weeds. So taking the kind of a, a medium gray tone there. Snow that's kind of in a shadow. And it kind of blends into that. And our weeds are kind of more of a burnt sienna tone on that side. So I'm going to just put some white and some burnt sienna and lighten that up a little bit. And fill in some of the area over here around that. So what I'm looking to do is not necessarily, I'm not really putting, like I said, any details in right now. I'm just trying to get basic shapes and color and get an idea of where things are. So where this is, this whole section, like it does have other colors in here. I'm looking for like the medium tone there, which is kind of a burnt sienna tone. So that's why I'm just going to do, look for the medium color, lay in that color, and then when you go back to put details on, you can put in darks and lights to add your details in on top of that. And you still have your basic medium color showing through. So you can utilize that first layer of paint when you go back to, to put more detail in later. So because the weeds are kind of this burnt sienna tone, that's what I'm going to use just to lay in that one spot. much darker as we get over to this side. There's a little bit of a dark spot here. Little shadows and stuff in the in the ground and where the uh, let's see. Yeah, it pretty much goes to a kind of a circle there. And this is gray over here, too. So, this off. And a little 
little bit of that gray right here. And we just have this one little section here, which is mostly dark, so I'm just going to lay that in really quick. It's got a little bit of burnt sienna in it because the weeds are still kind of growing up in here. And just get the paint on here. I finished um, a commission this week also, so um, I'm hoping to be able to share that with everybody soon. I just need to get that delivered. Yeah, I'm just going to jump to my smaller brush so that I can lay in some of those branches with some white. Kind of smooth them out a little bit where they are. You can see them. Thanks for hanging with me, Lynn. Appreciate it.
Snow keeps going off the roof anyway, <laughs> even though it's very cold out there. So we kind of pretty much have most of that with that first layer in there now. Um, I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then will be where I can go back and start looking at detail. So I think what I'll do is um, I'm going to pull this in a little closer. I'm going to start putting in some paint on the deer. So I'm going to tilt this down a little bit. And I'm going to start putting in the first layer on the little deer in the front. to make this as accurate as I can for this first layer um, because she is going to be the focal point so we want to make sure that everything is as, as detailed and as accurate as possible even on the first layer. So we'll start with her ears. I'm just gonna put in where these little tufts are in her ears. Tufts. And I'm going to switch to my smaller brush here. Try this one. She has some little darker spots here in her ear. Like I said, this is the first layer of paint, so on top of the, the base coat. So trying to get paint on the canvas, but at the same time with her trying to be a little bit more detailed as we go so that things are pretty much laid in there even on the first coat Obviously, I will go back after and redo final details. 
is needed. And adjust if needed. The thing that is most important about doing animals or portraits um, is definitely the eyes. It's always the part that I enjoy doing the most and a lot of times I don't do that until the very end but it brings everything totally together. Spot on her head here. And around that's kind of a grayish tone. shadow of her face. If you have any questions about anything, please put those in the comments and I will go back and answer them. If I don't catch them here on the live. And my phone is ringing downstairs, but it's mostly just telemarketers most of the time anyway. <laughs>
I need to add a little bit of black to the palette, or actually dark blue, so that I can mix a darker color. I don't have the right to color tone here on the palette yet. Put some ultramarine blue on the palette and mixing that with burnt umber gives you kind of a warm if you mix the two together you can get a very nice um, kind of a warm black it isn't often that I use black straight out of the tube it's usually blue and burnt umber mixed together, which gives you that really nice warm tone. She's got kind of a pointed little nose. some white around on her nut nuzzle is that what you'd say nuzzle Basically just taking this one step at a time. And it's okay if things are not exact right now. I'm just trying to do it as exact as I can. But um, if there's a little bit of issue with detail, it can be fixed later once it's had a chance to dry, you can go back over and fix and adjust things as needed. The nice thing about oil too is that it's easy to um, Manipulate the paint when it's wet. So you can readjust as needed to.
kind of neat that uh, deer have rings of white around their eyes. So my timer has gone off, and I know that I'm right at noon time, roughly. So I'm going to say goodbye for now and continue working on her. But I appreciate that you were here today watching along with me, and um, I hope that you will join me again next week, and we'll work some more on this little deer. I hope you can see her face coming out as we start there. She kind of looks like she has a, a white eye as far as I can see in the film, but um, I appreciate that you're here and I hope to see you again next week. So have a good few days and take care, be well, and I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.